Welcome to NECA Voice of Business, a radio program aired by the Nigeria Employers Consultative Association aimed at raising awareness and discussing contemporary issues that relate to doing business in Nigeria, enterprise development and business sustainability. We will look at evolving topical government policies and the relevant institutions. At NECA Voice of Business, discussions will center around matters of concern to businesses which could either cut across all the sectors of the Nigerian economy or sector-specific. Guests on the program will include subject matter experts who are prominent, respected and experienced in their respective fields of work and operations. Audience are encouraged to call in live on the program to pose questions to our panel of experts, make comments or recommendations on issues tabled for discussion. NECA Voice of Business is also available on our dedicated YouTube channel. Our audio streaming platform links are Mixellar, NECA Voice of Business, Waystream, NECA Voice of Business, NECA, the voice of business since 1957, bringing you business information. Today we'll be discussing the recent issues on tax onslaughts on organized businesses. We're focusing on policy issues and the challenges. And my name is Tom Snagbabio, Director of Legal Regulatory Taxation and I work for NECA. With us here is Mr. Olumiwa, who is the Chairman, Committee of Finance Experts of NECA. And he'll be sharing with us several thoughts as concerns the subject matter. Thank you. Sir. I know that in the light of your work, you also come across this new array of taxes, some like the green tax and several other forms of taxes, and it's coming at the tail end of this administration. And then we just want to, what's your take on this? Okay, uh, we need to realize that uh, government is continuing as a as an entity, as the case may be, and um, we may not have a complete agreement for or against um, the introduction of taxes or government carrying out its duty at any point in time. But what we should focus much more on, rather on the issue of introduction of new taxes. Okay. And again, one thing we need to first of all understand is that uh, every form of tax must emanate from the law. Okay. Okay. And when we talk about a law, we are talking about an act of parliament. Mm -hmm. Okay, we then speak to the fact that uh, when we look at what you mentioned, which is one of the new taxes that may emerge, the green tax, okay, the objective to which those tax may be required might be valid. But that doesn't mean it is legal from the perspective of the law. It means there is no formal law enacted such a tax. And in that case, it might come to illegality. Okay? But again, I believe government will have to do what they need to do. But there's also a consideration for the fact that let us assume that it is legal by promulgation of the law. Okay, but another thing we need to understand is that policy of government uh, by introduction of taxes also play a critical role in competitiveness of the businesses within our economy. Okay. And we must realize that the world is not a global village. Absolutely. The level of competition is not within. We are competing with every economy of the world. And to remain competitive, it then means that you must be able to produce have high production level and at affordable prices. Otherwise, import goods will look cheaper than local goods if tax is not well managed. And therefore, what we only try to pay to government is that rather than introducing multiple taxes across board, it's better for government to go back to the drawing board and try to consolidate most of these taxes so that it can be well managed, it can be well, more or less, actualized from the hand of government and also from the hand of organized businesses, so that this can improve foreign direct investment and likewise ease of doing business in Nigeria. 
I, I, I appreciate the fact that you said that government is a continuum. And in that regard, what would be your advice to the incoming administration? Today, we are in the month of May 2023. And before the end of the month, there's likely going to be a new set of administration, a new president, a new government. What would be your advice to the incoming government in terms of tax and fiscal policy agenda? for the incoming government? Okay, um, I will advise the incoming government to probably go to the drawing board. The last drawing board with respect to fiscal policy was the Nigeria Tax Policy Framework that was in 2017. And uh, probably let us revisit that document, improve on it to meet current demand and challenges. And that will necessitate how government can simplify our tax system and also create tax administration efficiency. And in accordance with that also, try to harness technology in a way that it supports businesses, not it impedes. Yes, IFRS over time has more or less adopted a technology, which to some degree has uh, more or less made tax administration efficient, but to other it still needs some drastic improvement. Okay, and apart from that, government need to create a neighboring environment, incentives that are suitable to revamp the economy. And government also need to understand that it needs to be consistent with its policy framework. Mm. And its policy framework should align the economy trajectory and how it could make Nigeria competitive among the global world. And all of this is very instrumental to being able to provide economic prosperity for Nigerians and Nigerian businesses. Therefore, I will encourage the new administration to look deeply into it and most especially try to align monetary policy objectives with fiscal policy objectives along with the trade policy objectives. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. A, a, a while ago, you mentioned that we are not just competing within our economy or our space, but businesses are now competing globally with the economies of other nations. And we know that in the nations across the globe, some of them are developing and some of them are developed nations. Do you want to share from your lot of experience um, areas? or lessons in which the incoming administration could even pick from in shaping the fiscal policy in Nigeria, the tax regime in Nigeria going forward? Okay, I'll first of all start with the fact that uh, to some people, they might not be aware about the enormity of taxes we have in Nigeria. Mm. Um, from record, even from the tax and uh, Levies Act, Miscellaneous Act, you will find out that uh, we have multiplicity of taxes. Right. At federal level, taxes are ranging towards about 12 or more. And of recent, we still have many bills, such as the Human Rights Bill, yes. that is coming to introduce additional tax of 0.3% on profit before tax. And we have a lot of that. In states, we have close to about 20 taxes. In local governments, they are already in 230 or more at various levels. The question then is, evidence and data has shown to us that um, not more than 5 to 6 taxes account for 95% of our tax revenue. The question then is, why don't we streamline our tax framework and ensure that at every point in time we are able to manage these 5 or 6 effectively in order to rejuvenate the economy. Also, one other thing you find out is that uh, there is always a strong legal framework consistent with the policy of government in order to ensure certainty when it comes to taxation. Because when you go back to Adam Smith's principles or doctrine of effective taxation, one of it is issue of certainty which goes in with simplicity, which means once there is no ambiguity. Once policy is consistent, remember businesses have to plan, not in terms of one year. Absolutely. Minimum three 
or five years. Therefore, they are planning based on you having understanding that this is a policy framework of government with respect to physical aspect of government activity that is going to run for three to five years. Therefore, in that situation, there should be consistency in policy. For example, most recently, government has introduced the fiscal measure policy, which existing one was a framework of three years of 2022 to 2024. But in the middle of the game, government is coming to introduce something and increasing tax, which is now contrary to the principle of effective taxation and financial plan for business prosperity. Therefore, we need to look at this area of consistency in policy and also issue of incentive that government can create. Because one thing government needs to understand is that businesses are the ones that are likely going to create tax revenues yes. for government, including taxes you collect from individuals. Because one way or the other is either your workforce, paying pay, or you are into business, whether as artisan or as an entrepreneur, where you earn income from the profit and you also pay personal income tax. In that regard, it means that everything about tax revenue revolves around prosperity of our economy and the successes of our businesses. Which then means that government needs to employ more of Nigerian businesses and equally provide enabling and incentive to drive in foreign direct investments. Mm. I, I do hope viewers are taking note of this. I'd like to take you up on that point when you talk about government ensuring that small businesses have access to credits, have access to funding, so that they're able to remain in business and all of that. But we're also aware that the regulatory space in Nigeria is challenging. It's challenging. We talk about multiplicity of taxes and policy inconsistency or policy somersault and all of that. But let us take it one after the other. If you look at the tragedy of running a business in Nigeria, one is faced with several, several um, issues or challenges. The first one will be funding. In your own view, how do you think government could assist or aid small businesses, whether the nano or the micro, medium, small scale or large one, access to credit and funding for, for them to remain in business? Okay, thank you very much. Uh, and that brings about the synergy and the coordination effect of monetary policy, which comes with CBN actions, mm -hmm. and fiscal policy, which comes with the Federal Ministry of Finance activities, including the Federal Ministry of Trade and Investment, where it talks about trade policies. Now, that synergy is going to ensure that government understands the plight of micro, mini, medium, nano, small businesses. Because in developing world that have advanced and in the developed world, you find out that small, medium enterprises are the life of the economy. Absolutely. Okay? And they are also the um, highest employer of labor. And that speaks to the fact that more efforts, concerted efforts, need to be channeled by our government to SMEs. And what that speaks to is that government should probably provide them access to credits. When I say access to credits, they've been doing it over time, but we just need to change our methodology towards amazing something that is adequate and something that is effective or sustainable. Now, government needs to last with financial institutions, probably majorly micro finance banks and provide guarantees for some businesses that probably meet the minimum requirements. Because most small businesses would never have collateral to substantiate what they do. Mm -hmm. What that means that government back guarantee or credit is critical to the sources of that. But one thing is to meet that from a monetary angle. From the fiscal angle also, I believe small businesses, even though government in the most recent time have catered for them. For example, businesses of 25 million turnover below are subject to company contacts at 0%. While those that are considered medium will turn over more than 25 million 
and not more than 100 million as subjected 20%. I really mean, we can still do more because today the purchasing power of money has lost its value, which simply means that the nominal price is very high with little or no value, which means today we see 25 million as a big threshold to use for determining what a small business is for tax purposes. But the question then is that what is the level of profitability based on operational bottlenecks you have in Nigeria today? For every sales you might have generated of 25 million, what percentage of it is profit? Is to tell you how so insignificant it will be. Which then is that government need to revisit it, probably to raise the threshold to something like 50 million for small businesses so that they are exempted from tax and raise the medium to probably 200 million turnover in order to cater for inflationary adjustment that have impacted prices of goods and services. That is that. But government also needs to do something in terms of provide a living environment for them to thrive. Let federal government, state government and local government come together to find a way of streamlining the taxes so that we can know that this singular tax, whether you call it consolidated tax, is what you pay probably to your local government in a year. This is what you pay to state government in a year. And probably if it affects federal government, so that at least businesses have certainty in terms of what are to be paid. And this money that have to be paid at taxes should not be important on them. Because the question is this. The more you allow small businesses to thrive, the more you allow small businesses to grow, the better for the economy. One, it creates employment. Yes. If it's all employment, we do that. Yes. It creates avenue to increasing taxes for personal income tax and some other things. And it also brings about economic prosperity on a larger scale, which contribute to your GDP. And it allows most of these small businesses to come out of their share which means informal to a former business that is no longer under the radar of not paying taxes. And I believe government still need to do more. And most especially, government need to provide avenue through associations like SMEDIA, which uh, government is much more involved in, to provide financial literacy yes. and capacity building for our small businesses. For example, they need to more or less have a venue to have accounting records to know the level of activities, which means record keeping is key. We then not to stop government partnering with media and the likes, and as a way of creating employment for young professionals to also cluster them and render what we call one off or cycle accounting services in terms of record keeping helping them to prepare books and some other things. Because all of this also go into our statistics that National Bureau of Statistics is going to use in trying to support government in providing details to what government can have effective national planning. Thank you, Mr. Dubuwa, for joining us this afternoon. We do appreciate having you here with us. This is which we have been speaking on the tax onslaughts on organized businesses policy issues and the way forward. This is the first of the series and we're coming up with the second and third series subsequently. But for now, we do hope that businesses and government will brace up for the challenges ahead of us. We thank you so very much. My name is Tom Snackwago and I work on everything. Welcome to NECA Voice of Business, a radio program aired by the Nigeria Employers Consultative Association aimed at raising awareness and discussing contemporary issues that relate to doing business in Nigeria, enterprise development, and business sustainability. We will look at evolving topical government policies and the relevant institutions. At NECA Voice of Business, discussions will center around matters of concern to businesses which could either cut across all the sectors of the Nigerian economy or sector-specific. Guests on the program will include subject matter experts who are prominent, 
respected and experienced in their respective fields of work and operations. Audience are encouraged to call in live on the program to pose questions to our panel of experts, make comments or recommendations on issues tabled for discussion. NECA Voice of Business is also available on our dedicated YouTube channel. Our audio streaming platform links are Mixellar, NECA Voice of Business, Waystream, NECA Voice of Business, NECA, the voice of business since 1957, bringing you business information.